There are times when we feel my mind is not in my control. It's constantly repeating the negative thought, the undesirable thought. So it appears that the mind is out of control, but that is not the case. Even a little child, if he or she exerts himself, has the ability to control the mind. Parents come and tell me, Swamiji, my child does not study. Tell him something. He is your child, you tell him. He doesn't listen to me. All right, beta, why don't you study? Uncle, my mind doesn't stick in studies. What to do? Big problem. The child says that he is not able to control his mind and it does not remain in studies. But that same child, when he is taking the final exam of the grade, he brings his mind into focus. And for three hours with an undistracted mind, he is answering the questions. Now he is not concerned about the neighbor, he is not looking out of the window. There is only one focus, the questions and the best possible answers. How did this child develop such mastery over the mind for three hours? Because the intellect decided these three hours are very important. Now, my dear mind, O oh Mani Ram, if you play mischief, I will lose out and I'll have to repeat the entire year. The pain is far more than the pleasure of restlessness. When the intellect has decided, it has controlled the mind. In other words, the intellect did have it within its power to do so. That kind of focus and concentration, if the child had maintained through the year, that child would have probably become a national level topper. But through the year, the intellect's decision was otherwise. The intellect said, studies are important for my parents, not for me. For me, it's play which is more important. They've made a mistake in thinking that this is so valuable. So when the intellect's decision was otherwise, every time the child brought the mind to the studies, the intellect pulled it away. So this power of controlling the mind with the intellect is given to human beings, not to animals. An animal will not say that today for my spiritual advancement I will observe a fast. Today I shall observe the Ekadashi Vrat. The animal will not do that. If the mind desires then every resource of the animal will go towards it. But for us human beings, we have been blessed with this faculty of vivek, discrimination, and that is why our scriptures say, Tatva Vismaranad Bheki Vat. The moment we forget that discrimination, the moment we forget the principles of right and wrong and the truths of the scriptures, the human being falls to the level of an animal. In other words, our humaneness is in the utilization of that intellect. If our intellect decides it can withdraw the mind from the most attractive sensual objects in a moment. 
It's not difficult. It appears to be difficult, but it's not. Consider this example. One man is hungry since four days. Now all his senses, his mind, his intellect are all hankering for food. Food, 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 because they are all in great torment. After four days of starvation, bring for him an attractive meal on a silver plate with the 56 kinds of items. He takes a look and he spots the hot gulab jamun. His mind asks the intellect, there is a gulab jamun out there. It will give us great pleasure. Should we indulge in it? The intellect sanctions, yes, we are all in torment, go for it. The intellect instructs the mind, the mind has instructed the hand and he has picked up the gulab jamun. He is taking it towards the mouth. The mouth has already started salivating in anticipation of the pleasure of the contact between the senses and the object. Just two inches away. Do you think it's possible to get that person detached in that situation? Of course not, Swamiji. Where is the question? When the senses are hankering for the pleasure, it's not difficult, just scream. What are you doing? You wish to die? Die? The intellect says there's something wrong. Stop. What's the matter? Don't you know there is poison in that gulab jamun? Poison? The intellect makes a split second decision. This is very dangerous. Throw it away. The intellect instructs the mind, the mind instructs the hand, and he has tossed it away. This person who was hungry since four days, and who was yearning for that gulab jamun, has become detached. It did not take a moment. You wish to check his renunciation? Offer him a million dollars. Sir, I'll give you a million dollars. Please eat it. He says, what will a dead man do with a million dollars? I don't want it. But tell me, have you seen anybody put poison in it? <laughs> no. Then, my friend has told me, is your friend the most truthful person in the planet? Is he an avatar of Harish Chandra? No, 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 he tells lies once in a while. In other words, he's unreliable and yet you have trusted him. Have you ever seen poison in your life? I have never seen poison. If I was to take a survey, 90% of us here have never seen poison. Chemists have seen it in the laboratories. Who, what does anybody else have to do with poison? So without having ever seen poison, on the one statement of an unreliable friend, this person became detached from the object of his hankering merely by the decision that this is harmful to me. Now, if we could make that decision again and again in the proper place, we would immediately gain control over the mind. In other words, to control the mind, you need wisdom. <laughs>